Get <laughs> Me? You know I don't do stuff like that. <laughs> it's fun. You should try it. I don't want to, Carolyn. It probably wouldn't work on me anyway. Well, you'll never know unless you try. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Pass it over. Nice one. <laughs> See, I told you nothing would happen. <laughs> Ruthie, that's good. I made you breakfast. Look, there you go. Pot of coffee, freshly squeezed orange juice, scrambled eggs, couple of rounds of toast. I think breakfast is the most important meal of the day, don't you? Right, now, beers is it Saturday. I thought we'd pop into town and do a spot of shopping. What do you think? Fancy that, Ruthie? Who are you? <laughs> eh? Followed closely and perhaps inevitably by where am I and what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> it's me, Chez. <laughs> Charlie! Charles Lovell, pleased to meet you. And we know each other? Yeah, we met last night in the Mexican restaurant. You were drinking tequilas. Ring any bells? No, but it does explain why I feel like somebody's stolen my liver and replaced it with a mini bar. <sighs> God, I should never drink tequila. I did warn you. I said, Ruthie. It's Ruth. Yeah, yeah, I said, Ruthie, that tequila is a very powerful spirit. And what did you do? I have no idea. You called me a dirty gringo and spat a lemon wedge in me face. <laughs> I'd had a bad day. Want to talk about it? No. Oh, fair enough. I was this close to becoming senior accounts clerk at our head office. <laughs> no wonder you were depressed. <laughs> I wanted it, you moron. Oh, right, right, right. Uh. How much exactly do you remember about last night? Specifically? Yeah. Nothing. Not even a bit where you had me pinned? Nothing! Whatsoever! <laughs> well, I have to admit, I'm feeling rather used. You spend half the night treating me as your own personal love toy, then come morning you can't even remember me name. What do you think that makes me feel like? A woman? <laughs> that Londoners are stuck up. But I was just in the shower and those nice builders from across the road were all calling out and waving to me. They couldn't have been more friendly. <laughs> Nothing brings people together quite like a pair of soapy breasts, eh, Carolyn? <laughs> what time did you get in last night? About 20 minutes ago. You know what they say about burning the candle at both ends? Hmm? It makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs> Where's Ruth? She's not here. And her bed hasn't been slept in. Well, didn't she leave a message on the answer phone? No. Oh, blimey, that's not like Ruth. Maybe she met someone last night. <gasps> no chance. Ruth likes to observe certain time-honoured courtship rituals. You know, researching the family history, full credit check, round-the-clock surveillance. In Ruth's world, even a quickie can take a couple of months. <laughs> hey, listen to my stars. <laughs> A handsome stranger will present you with a golden opportunity. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Marvellous, Carolyn. What sign are you? Skepticus. <laughs> well, that society not believing in all that old bollocks. All right, I'll see you. Can I turn round yet? No. <laughs> so what do you think of it? 
Excuse me? The flat I just moved in. Oh, it's very tasteful. Who's your decorator? Peter Stringfellow? <laughs> it's all part of my fresh start. I'm divorced. My ex-wife, Angela, she got the house and everything. What is it they say? Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Especially when she's been scorned for a 23-year-old old pair from Malmo. <laughs> Look, it's not that I don't find your life story endlessly fascinating, but would you mind not speaking to me again until I'm in a different postcode? <laughs> there I was in bed with the lovely Ula, smoking a cigarette and relaxing, basking in the afterglow of spent passions when, bang, in walks my Angela. I assume she went ballistic. You're not kidding, she hated anybody smoking in the bedroom. <laughs> anyway, all I've ended up with is this. The flat and the old love wagon. The love wagon? Yeah, my Porsche 911. Powder blue, shiny. So fast. Oh, my God. What is it? I've just had sex with a man who bangs au pairs and calls his car the love wagon. <laughs> I think I'm going to be sick. Miss Jackson, you're late. Oh, I'm sorry, Benito, but my mum and dad had some really bad news. Oh, now let me guess. You're moving back in with them. <laughs> oh, I ran into an accident. She fell. By the wayside? Into a coma. Ah. Now, would that be the grandmother who was killed in the freak bobslaying incident of just last month? <laughs> or the one who passed away peacefully in her sleep after her plucky struggle against the E. coli virus? Well, the thing is, when I say my grandmother... Yes, what? yes. Miss Jackson, remind me again. Why do I hire you? Because I'm cheap, live local, and I lack ambition. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Carry on, Miss Jackson. Oh, go on, eat some breakfast before you go. It'll make you feel better. Look, I don't want to feel better. I want to go home, take a nice, long, refreshing shower, and then burn my clothes. Have you got that? Yes, sir. Good. Well? Well what? I said I want to go home. Oh, you want me to call you a cab? No. I want you to fire me out of a bloody cannon! <laughs> Right, right. Where are you going? 24, St John's Court, St John's Wood. <laughs> I asked you to call me a cab. You don't need one. You don't live far. Oh, I'm in St John's Wood. You're in St John's Court, number 23. You live opposite. Miss Jackson, there's a call for you. Who is it? It's the gentleman on table 14. They want to know if they have to apply for their breakfasts in writing. <laughs> One pot of Earl Grey tea and two bowls of muesli with fresh fruit. Uh, miss, did you remember that I wanted my muesli made with skimmed milk? Of course. Well, which one is it? The lighter one. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Jackson? What now? I wish to draw your attention to the memo on the staff notice board. Which one? Uh, I only issued one memo. I meant which staff notice board? I have a copy here. It reads, as from today, tipping will be at the discretion of the customer. Oh, you're joking. Alas, not, Miss Jackson, for I am in the business of providing light refreshment, not light entertainment. <laughs> I believe my new scheme will lead to a better standard of service and improved customer relations. Oh, but I've got an excellent relationship with my customers. Well, half of them only come in here because of me. Excuse me, miss. Shut up, I'm talking! <laughs> You have never set eyes on me before in your life. We are strangers. By that, I mean if I see you lying on the floor, dying of a gunshot wound, I will step over you without a second thought. And if you ever breathe a word about this to either of my flatmates, I will personally hunt you down and rip out your heart with my bare hands. Any questions? Are you always this clingy after sex? <laughs> Goodbye. Well, I'd suggest a threesome, but I'm still a bit charvered from last night. <laughs> Just get rid of her. Right. Hi. Hi. 
Hi. I'm Carolyn from number 24. Hello, Carolyn from number 24. I'm Charlie from number 23. Oh, I couldn't help noticing the boxes outside. Have you just moved in? No, the boxes just moved out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd come over and say welcome. Welcome! <laughs> oh, and I thought I'd bring you a bottle of champagne as a housewarming gift. Well, that's very kind. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't have any champagne, so I bought you a Snapple. Oh! Guava iced tea, my favourite. Would you like to come in, Carolyn, from number 24? Thanks. Do you have another name, Carolyn? Munro. Carolyn Munro? I was named after Marilyn Munro. Unfortunately, the vicar had a hair lip. What a bad flat. Do you like it? It's kicking. <laughs> Are you a secret agent? No. I own a couple of video shops. I used to have a chain, but my ex got most of the links. Wow! Look at that CD player! Yeah? Yeah, Carolyn. What's this? That's amazing! Yeah? Can I have a go? Yeah, go on. Gotta roll with it, you gotta take... <laughs> No, you couldn't. <laughs> so how long you lived here then, Carolyn? About six months. Before that, I lived in Worthing. What, by the sea? No, in a house. The beach was by the sea. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you've got loads to do. Hey? No, not at all. Hey, why don't you sit yourself down and tell me all about yourself? All hey? right, then. Now, take your time. I don't want you to miss anything out. <laughs> Croissant. Just coming, sir. And we wanted them served warm. Do you have a microwave? No, but it'd be my pleasure to sit on them for you, sir. <laughs> yes, sir, no, sir. Three bags full, sir. I'll tell you what, if I have to keep this up much longer, well, people are going to think I'm some kind of a... Waitress. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, after the newsagents burnt down so mysteriously, I went to work for the Samaritans. You work for the Samaritans? Yeah. They let me answer the phones. Apparently, I have a natural aptitude for communicating with disturbed people. <laughs> really? I was getting on ever so well. Then the stupid phone company went and introduced call cool waiting. I was speaking to these three manic depressives when my friend Zoe came through, so I put them on hold. Only I couldn't get them back again. By the time I did, all four of them were going completely mental. I thought you said there was three. I did, but one was a schizophrenic. <laughs> Carolyn, what say you and I crack open your snapple? That's what I love about London. You never know what's going to happen next. <laughs> well, you'll have a look up here and see if you can find the right glass for it. Thanks. Yeah. Secret agent. <laughs> now, where are you going? Back to work. And what about the house meeting? I've already met the house, thanks, Ruth. This is an emergency <laughs> house meeting. Oh, no, I left the toilet lid up again. This is not about the toilet lid, Carolyn. <laughs> this is about me. How oh, great. This is going to be even less interesting than the toilet lid. <laughs> As you know, I didn't come home last night, and I just wanted to assure you that there's a perfectly simple explanation. Oh, good. Right, now, can I go to work? Lee! <laughs> I merely went to the cinema with a girlfriend after work. Well, after the film, we went back to her house for a coffee. We got so carried away talking about the film, I decided to stay over. That's all there was to it. It was all perfectly innocent and above board. What film did you see? For God's sake, Carolyn, what is this, a third degree? <laughs> she only asked a simple question. What film did you see? Where was it? On what time did it start? I can see where this is leading. Oh, I'm glad someone can. Just because I don't come home for one night, you both automatically assume that I'm having sex. The problem with you two is you're just completely obsessed. Everything with you is just sex, sex, sex. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Shut up, Carolyn. Oh, Ruth, calm down. It's all right. We believe you. What? We know you didn't have sex. Really? Yeah. How can you be so sure? 
You didn't take your spare knickers out with you. You always take your morning after pants when you're going to get your leg under. <laughs> yeah, but it could have been, you know, spontaneous. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, Ruth, it's just the thought of you doing something spontaneous is up there with Vanessa Phelps going on hunger strike. Oh, oh, so I'm boring, am I? No, just cautious. Sensible. Well organised. Grown up. In other words, you think I'm an anally retentive, dull, wet blanket. We never said that. But now you come to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name's Lee. I'm your waitress. How may I help you? Well, what do you have that's got no salt, no fat and no cholesterol? Napkins. <laughs> All right, I'll see if the chef can whip you up something special. Lee, you'll never guess what just happened to me. Oh, don't tell me. You walked into a room full of men and all your clothes fell off. No, don't be silly. I never let that happen again. No, you remember my horoscope, the handsome stranger with the golden opportunity? Yes. Well, a man just came up to me in the street and asked me for my phone number. Mm, was he handsome? Yeah, in a fattish, middle-aged, going bald kind of way. Anyway, I gave it to him. Carolyn, it's you that's supposed to be presented with the golden opportunity, not him. You don't understand. Mm. He asked me if I'd be interested in appearing on a telly programme. Oh, that old chestnut. Could be. What side's it on? <laughs> Girls, I just came to tell you that I think you may have got the wrong idea about me. I do have my wild and crazy side, you know. In fact, where I grew up, I had the reputation as something of a, a free spirit. Ruth, you grew up in Milton Keynes. <laughs> OK. OK, I'm going to have to come clean with you. The other night, when I said I went to the pictures, I lied. I was, in fact, having sex. <laughs> Spur of the moment, unplanned, casual sex. I, uh, I took a walk on the wild side. <laughs> you did it with Lou Reed! <laughs> of course I didn't do it with Lou Reed! I did do it. Look, Ruth, I really haven't got time for this. I've got work to do. Well, Lee, I'm telling the truth. Yeah, yeah. Lee, if you must know, I had sex with a total stranger. <laughs> oh, good evening, sir. The name's Charlie. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it for a moment. <laughs> what can I get you to drink, Mr. Charlie? Oh, I'll have a dry white wine, please. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Benito. Oh. Suppose most people call you Ben. Never more than once. <laughs> Where's Ruth? Oh, I gave her the slip in the ladies lose. As we speak, she's relating her tawdry sex fantasies to the Nigerian woman in Cubicle 3. Why is she acting so weird? Well, in her own charmingly deranged way, I think she might be trying to impress us. Ruth doesn't have to make things up to impress me. I still haven't got over the fact that she told her mum she carries a condom. She doesn't really, Carolyn. She only said that because she likes to watch the old bat hyperventilate. <laughs> Girls, I really did have sex last night, and what's more, I can prove it. See that guy standing over by the bar talking to Benito? <laughs> That's him! <laughs> Leave it out, Ruth. He looks like that bloke off the adverts. <laughs> That's Charlie. He's our neighbour. He's just moved into the block. I know that. And I'm telling you, I slept with him. Oh, that's good. Well, now you won't have to bother with a housewarming gift. <laughs> you don't believe me? Right. Oh, hello. Come with me. Hi, Charlie. Hello, Carolyn. Never mind all that. Tell them about last night. What about last night? Just tell them what happened. I don't know what you're talking about, miss. <laughs> I'm talking about, um, you, me, us, what we did, together. What is it you think we did together, miss? Please, just tell them. I've never met this lady before in my entire life. She's a complete stranger to me. Oh! You are a very dirty young lady. <laughs> Don't tell me, tell them! That's Ruth. <laughs> This is Lee, my other flatmate. Hi, Lee. Hi. Oh, nice shirt. Yeah? It's Versace. <laughs> Miss, over here. Oh, back to work. It's all right. I'll see you later. This is for you. What is it? 
It's your tip. anybody that we'd slept together. No. And you've got the nerve to call yourself a man. <coughs> you humiliated me in front of my friends. My reputation is shot to shit. There's something peculiar about this conversation I can't quite put my finger on. <laughs> Carolyn and Lee have got it into their heads that I'm a bit... Boring? Well... Stick in the mud? <laughs> Dullers ditch water? Yes, thank you. <laughs> That's why I wanted you to tell them the truth. So they'd think I was... Only you told them nothing happened. Yeah. Nothing did happen. What? Between us, nothing happened. I was in your bed. Naked. And very drunk. And not to mention snoring. So, you mean we, we definitely never... No, we, we definitely never. God, I am boring. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Why did you let me think that we had? Because you were really horrible to me. First, you couldn't even be bothered to remember my name. Then you couldn't wait to get out of the place quick enough. You acted like a complete... Man. Exactly. You hurt my feelings. A bit. And I suppose I should apologise. A bit. So if we promise to never not sleep with each other again, can we be friends? I suppose so. Fancy a nightcap? As long as it's not tequila. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it won't be a sec. <laughs> so, Charlie, when I was in your bed the other night, did you undress me? Me? No, no. Oh, so I undressed myself. Not exactly. Then who exactly did take my clothes off? The pizza delivery boy. <laughs> I didn't have enough change for a tip. <laughs> Cheers. Miss Jackson, you'll be pleased to hear that upon review, I have decided to reintroduce the compulsory 15% service charge. The new policy is effective immediately. Oh, Benito, that's brilliant. Thanks. My pleasure. Now, would you please put the customers down, Miss Jackson? <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? Carolyn on the telly. Oh, you don't get out much, do you, Chaz? <laughs> shh, shh. Here she comes again. Oh, turn the sound up. Go on, Carolyn. Go on, Carolyn. Oh, please. <laughs> Look at her shorts. People in the front row can see her bum. That's why they call them ringside seats. <laughs> her bum's tiny. Look at it. Mine's twice that size. Compared to me, Carolyn hasn't even got a bum. That's it. What's it? I've got Carolyn's share of bum. Must be some kind of buttock osmosis. Oh, shut up, Ruth. You've got a great bum. No, I haven't. It's horrible. Felt all right to me. 